Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making low poly animals. This is a basic tutorial but it's not a complete beginner's tutorial. So you will need some understanding of the basic interface. I would say in general it's about a 2 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, but to make a good looking animal it's about 5 out of 10. If you'd like the blender file or to download the model, you can become my patron. You can find a link to that in the description. My screencast keys are in the bottom left corner here, so when I press anything, you should see it appear there. I'm using Blender 2.8, and hopefully when you start, your Blender should look something like this. The first thing to do is get some reference images that we can copy. So I typed into Google, giraffe, and side. So I'm gonna do a giraffe today, and I found this nice one from Dimensions Guide and I could download it as a JPEG just here. Now certain files won't work in Blender, I don't think an SVG or a DWG works, but usually things like JPEG, PNG, GIFs, they're okay. If you have any problems, it might be the file format that you downloaded, so try and find a different file. So into Blender, and we need to bring those background images in. I'm going to start off by deleting the default cube, so I left click select and press delete. And in order to add objects, we can go up to add, just up here, or you can see the shortcut there, Shift A. So I'm going to press Shift A, and in the menu there is an image option. And I'm going to bring them in as a background image. So I'll click on background, find my giraffe file, and load background image. Now it comes in perpendicular to your camera, which is a little awkward in this case. So if I select it with left click, and it's already selected, if I press Alt R, that will clear any rotations, so Alt-R, and Alt-G will clear any movement. So if I press N now to get my view up here, you can see its location is set to zero, its rotation is set to zero, and its scale is set to one. And that should make it a bit easier for us. It's not very good practice to work from the top view like this, so I'm going to rotate my reference image in the x-axis, which is this red one down here, which you can also see up the corner here, by 90 degrees, so R, then X 90, so type R X 90, and it will rotate 90 degrees and press enter. You can scale it up if you like, but it doesn't make too much difference. What will make it slightly easier if I put it roughly in the center of my grid. So I'm using this side reference here. So if I press G to grab it in the X axis, so press X, G then X, and just slide it to the right there, or whichever direction you need to slide it, and place it in the middle there. Just check that's okay. Now what I want to do is add a plane. So I'm going to trace around my giraffe with a plane. So Shift A, or go up to the top here, Shift A, Mesh Plane. Now that also is the wrong way around, so I'm going to press R, X, 90, so it rotates in the x-axis 90 degrees. Now the problem is we can't see our giraffe in the background because we can't see through our shape. We can press Z on our keyboard, which will take us to this radial menu here, and we can click on wireframe. You can also get there up the top here. So we've got solid mode there and wireframe there. Now in order to start moving these points around and changing the shape, I need to go into edit mode. At the moment we're in object mode, so I can press tab or I can go up here to edit mode. So tab will take us to object mode and edit mode. Now if I start selecting these points and moving them around to move them into position, like this, so I'll start with this area here, you can see that they're a bit distorted in 3D space. So that's not the best way to do it. So we'll undo those steps with Control Z and go back to this stage here where it's nice and flat. What I want to do is go to front view with one on my numpad. If you haven't got a numpad, then do look in the links in the description or of the card in the corner to show you how you can change your keyboard settings to be able to quickly go to side view. So one on the numpad will take me to front view, and now I can start moving around these points by left clicking, G to grab, and move them into position. Left click, G to grab, and move to position. Left click to select, G to grab, move it into position. Now at the moment, I'm not going to do the legs, I'm going to do the body and the neck and the head, so as one big shape. I'll explain why in a bit and I'm going to try and make as few faces as possible. So I'll do another one here, one here, and so on. Try not to do loads and loads of faces because it just gets really complicated and you end up with lots of these little points to change. So the less, the better. So what I'm going to do is select this point and this point at the bottom with shift left click, so they're both selected now. 
and press E to extrude and that pulls out a new face. Then I can left click to select where that's going to be positioned and then start moving these points around by left clicking and pressing G to grab. So I'll select these two points again, do the same process. That one there, shift select that one there. They turn orange, which doesn't help that the giraffe is orange. And then E to extrude and pull those out and then left click, G to grab and move them into position. So I'm going to continue that process up to the end. Don't worry too much about this bit at the moment, or if there's any big lumpy bits, you can add topology later, or faces later. If I need to move around in front view, I shift middle click and I can strafe around. But as soon as I press the middle mouse button, I'll go out of front view and I need to press one on my numpad to get back. So I've got the rough shape there, which you can see, but it's very flat. And perhaps we need to add a tiny bit of topology around here to help it out. So if you miss a point, you can press Control R to create a loop down the middle. If I just quickly go to solid mode up here and press Control R, you'll see it a bit easier. And it depends where I have my mouse positioned as to where it's cutting a line. So Control R is what's called a loop cut and it cuts a line. So I want one in this area here so I can create these funny lump bits sticking out there. So I left click, I can move it where I like along that face, but just in the middle there is fine. So left click once again, and now I've got some points that I can pull around again. I'm just going to even these out a bit because it makes it a little bit simpler when they're even. And that's a reasonably good starting point. But I made a slight mistake there because I started moving them around when I wasn't in front view. So if I go to the side view now with three on my numpad, you can see that they're slightly out of kilter. That doesn't matter because I imagine lots of people are gonna make that mistake and I'm going to explain how to get rid of that a bit later on. So I've got a very flat looking giraffe and I want to make it into a solid shape. If I go to face mode up the top here, or you can press three on your numpad. So there's vertex, edge and face and select all the faces with A and press E to extrude, I can pull them out and I've got a solid shape now. What I'm also going to do is mirror this across the X axis, so in the Y axis, so that we only have to build half the shape. In order to do that, I'm going to need to delete this half of my faces so I don't have faces in the middle. So with face mode still selected, I can just shift click all these faces and press delete and then faces. Now I've got half a model that I can mirror. So I go to the modifiers tab down here with this little spanner, click on add modifier and then mirror. Now it's not mirrored how I'd expect. It's going across the Y axis, even though it says it should be the X axis here. And that's because right at the start, we rotated our plane. So if I go to the location settings on my panel over here by pressing tab on my keyboard to go into object mode, you can see the location's at zero, but the rotation is at 90 degrees in the x-axis. We need to clear that, but we can't actually just type in zero here because it puts it back. So I'll undo that with Control Z. We need to set this rotation so it's all zero. We do that by pressing Control A, rotation, and that will apply the rotation. Now it's all zero, and if I now tick on the y-axis and untick the x-axis, you'll see that it mirrors across nicely. It's mirroring around this edit point here. So if I go into edit mode again and select all my faces and then G to grab in the Y axis, you can see it's mirrored around that centered point. Now what you have to be a bit careful of is if I pull this over to the other side, it still mirrors it, but we're all reversed. So watch out for that and watch out for this as well when they overlap each other like this. That's not good either. So the best way is just to pull them apart slightly. So I've selected all with A, pull them apart in the Y axis. So G then Y to maybe somewhere around there. And then we can turn clipping on, which will make sure that any touching points in the center will stick together. So we can select this edge loop going all the way around the middle by clicking on the edge menu here or two on your keyboard and then Alt left click and you'll select that big edge loop around the middle there, G to grab in the Y axis, and they'll stick together. Now when I press G to grab in the Y axis, I can't move them because they're stuck. 
I can move them in the other axes though, like this. Okay, so we're getting there. We need to do some legs next. An important point is not to press apply on your mirror modifier. As soon as you do that, it will apply the shape and it won't copy what you do on one side to the other side. You just leave it there running. So let's make some legs. Now many people think that I can press three on my keyboard, go to face mode and maybe pull these two out, E to extrude and make a leg, but they'd be stuck together in the middle and they're a bit fat as well. So let's undo that. What I need to do is create a loop cut down the middle so that there's a space between the two. So control R for the loop cut, if you remember that, and then point your mouse when you get this loop down the middle there and left click and then probably around here I reckon and left click again. Now I can press three and then select this face ready to pull out the leg. So let's go to front view again and press E to extrude to pull that down. So E to extrude will pull out your mesh and create new topology. I'm scaling that in, grabbing it and following the contours of the leg. So E to extrude again. I can also just rotate this, grab it, rotate with R, grab with G and scale with S. E to extrude, scale, rotate and grab with G, R and S. And remember I'm doing this all in front view. So we've got the basics of our giraffe coming out now. I'll select this front face here to extrude this leg down, back into front view, E to extrude to pull that face out and move it into position with G. Now if you want the bottom faces to all line up, if I select both of them, go to my front view again and press scale Z, zero. It will scale them all and make them flat in the Z axis. So we've got the very basics of a giraffe now. We need to do a bit of editing to change its shape and to make it look a bit more giraffe-like. So from here you can probably figure out how to adjust your shape into a giraffe based on everything we've done already. In the next episode, I'll be completing the model and going through a few render settings, but I'd encourage you to have a go and see if you can try and create the rest of it for yourself. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.